Part 17 of the Stuart Major Beam Engine Rebuild, and I'm painting. I'm painting the beam currently. This is of course speeded up. I generally speed up the painting parts because it's very boring, and you will slip into a coma because I'm in danger of doing the same. This is Precision Paints LMS Red Crimson Lake. When you're painting models, it's very important not to get any runs or drips because they do look really bad. And on an item like this, it would be very difficult to rub the drips down with a piece of sandpaper later, because it's a complex shape. Recently, the number of comments on my YouTube channel has dramatically increased, and this is a good thing, I do like to get comments from viewers. Unless, of course, they're absolutely stupid and pointless. Pretty much like the one I got last week. The viewer said he was disappointed, I mean, disappointed? Yeah, disappointed, that my video was short, 1 minute 50, I believe. So out of curiosity, I looked at the videos that this chap had put on his channel, and the longest one he'd put up was 14 seconds. And I thought to myself, hmm, I must be doing it wrong. Anyway, there is some interesting news. So I'm completing the painting of the beam, as you can see here, and then I'll be moving on to painting something else. A few episodes ago, I had a really big moan about the state of the beam casting, the fact that the bosses, where the pins go through, are not in line at each side. Even if you get it right on one side, it's not going to be right on the other side. And after this comment, I got a really informative email from a viewer. I'll read out part of it. The pattern for the beam itself is in two halves down its length, and unfortunately the halves rarely line up, hence the offset from the bosses, one side to the other. The centres of the bosses are not spaced as per drawings, probably due to casting shrinkage, so the builder has a choice. Either put the holes correct to each other, which keeps the engine dimensions mechanically correct, I'll put in the visual centre of the bosses and take a chance as to how well it will run. He then goes on to say that another problem with the casting, looking down the length of the beam, is that most of them are slightly banana shaped. And then says, all of these problems stem from a crap pattern and shrinkage. He continues, other problems include the sole plate being approximately one eighth of an inch short down its length, which means that the cylinder is sat about a sixteenth off centre to its boss and a discrepancy on the other side of about one sixteenth of an inch, whereby the main bearing is not central to the two lugs on the cradle it sits in. Again, this is due to casting shrinkage. To add yet more misery for the machinist, they are also slightly bowed. Crap pattern again. I'd better put a quick disclaimer in here. These are not my thoughts, these are the thoughts of a viewer who took the time to send me an email. And in the case of this specific engine, I can't even be sure that these are Stuart castings. They could be cast from other Stuart castings. Some of them are good and some of them are not so good, but from my experience, Stuart castings are generally pretty good. The other thing is, I notice it's much quicker and easier to read from a piece of paper, because what I generally do is go in the workshop and do the job, video it, put the footage into the editor, end up with a reasonable length, and once again I apologise for the 1 minute 51 last week, and then all I do is sit in front of the computer with a microphone and talk to the computer. While I've been reading out the email and other things, I've been painting the bearings, and as you can see they're looking good. Now I'm painting the connecting rod. These scallop parts of the connecting rod look really good when they're painted, and you will get paint all over the connecting rod, and if you wipe it off like this it's not a really good idea, because you'll see that you've wiped off part of the red bit. So it's best to sort of just leave it really, and when the paint is dry, rub it off with a piece of emery cloth. That way you will get a cleaner edge. This ornate connecting rod is a really important part of a beam engine, and it's very, very visible. So take your time with it to make sure you get a good finish, and you don't get any runs or drips on the red part. A few painting experts are probably thinking, well, he's not using any primer, what's going on? Well, the reason for that is I don't use any primer because I do find the primer comes off, even etched primer comes off. The paint doesn't just fall off, it's usually from some sort of physical damage. And then you end up with a big lump out of the paint because the combination of primer and the top coat makes the paint coat thicker. Whereas if you rub this paint off, or damage it in any way, it's such a thin layer of paint, you can quickly get a piece of wet or dry paper rub down the paint and touch it up with a paintbrush dipped in the same paint pot. From my experience of painting models, the best stuff to use is the two-pack paint and spray it, but you need breathing apparatus and lots of gadgets, which I don't have. So I just carry on doing it this way, it seems to work for me. 
What do I know about painting? I'm just a musician from Dewsbury in West Yorkshire. Dewsbury in West Yorkshire, which used to be the centre of the heavy woollen district, made blankets for both sides of the American Civil War. Now there's a historical fact. West Yorkshire is in the United Kingdom, just in case you're curious as to where it is in the world. And on that note, I will say thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.